ghoulies and ghosties and things that go bump in the night. They have haunted our imaginations since history began. In legends and rituals, in monuments and stories, the dead are always there. But is it really possible for anything to return from the grave? Even today, the question grips us with fascinated fear. Are they real? Or can science find another answer for what we think we see and hear? Enter the fifth dimension and discover the scientific truth behind ghosts. Ghosts fascinate, frighten, and play on our deepest fears. I can definitely hear somebody here, and I'm not enjoying it. I'm really, really not enjoying it. Are they trying to contact us, or do we call them into existence? That apparition was standing a couple of feet in front of me. Every culture throughout time has its own supernatural beliefs. Some ghosts are angry. Some bring warnings. Some even appear cast in stone. But is there any real proof they exist? Today, Science is trying to unlock this mystery. They're actually feeling breathing on the back of the neck, and I can see there's no one behind them. I don't feel alone. Can ghosts survive the sophisticated equipment and glare of modern science? Great Britain is a good place to start the journey. Some claim it's the most haunted country in the world. 2,000 years of history, crammed with warring kings and queens, castles and battlefields. There are over 300 recorded haunted sites and every kind of ghost. From headless horsemen to graveyard spectres. The UK has it all. More than 500 groups specialize in the paranormal. There's an entire industry dedicated to ghost hunting. Professor Richard Wiseman is a psychologist from University of Hartford. He specializes in the paranormal. How does he think science and the supernatural fit together? As a scientist working in this rather unusual field, to me what's important is we chase up and examine the best evidence. So if people say, wow, this building is haunted, and over time lots of people have visited that building and they all have strange experiences in a certain location, science can't explain this particular case, then that's the case that we should look at. So can he find a scientific explanation for what's happening in one of Britain's most haunted houses? Hampton Court Palace on the outskirts of London. Built by a cardinal, stolen by one king, a prison for another. For 500 years, it's witnessed some of the most dramatic events in British history. Maybe those events have left their memories in the ancient stones. But that's not the only reason why tourists flock here. Ian Franklin is a guard at the palace. The public are fascinated, and it is true, when people come to the palace, the question a lot of us are asked first is, where, where can we find the haunted pots? 
actually seeing a ghost at Hampton Court is a very rare phenomenon indeed. It's usually the feelings that of, of, of panic or fear or the feeling of being pushed, punched, kicked. They're the things that are much more readily reported here. In the 16th century, Henry VIII took the palace as his home and made it the scene for his colorful and complicated home life. Legend has it that the ghosts of some of his six wives still stalk the corridors. And these are experiences that are very, very difficult to write off uh, as being natural phenomenon. Uh, there, there is a something going on. One ghost is particularly famous. In 1542, Catherine Howard, Henry's fifth wife, was imprisoned here, charged with adultery and condemned to death. The night before her execution, she ran weeping to the king's rooms, pleading for her life. And uh, she banged on the door in vain. The story goes that her guards grabbed hold of her, recaptured her and dragged her away, kicking and screaming towards her rooms. The king refused to listen. The next day, she was beheaded. Over 400 years later, some say her ghost still runs through the galleries. And tourists hoping to catch a glimpse sometimes get more than they bargain for. The uh, palace had a little bit of a problem because on recent tours, some visitors had fainted and had some very unusual experiences at some particular locations in the palace. And they wanted to understand what was going on. Now, they weren't saying that ghosts actually exist or that ghosts don't exist. They wanted an open-minded scientific investigation. It was time for Richard Wiseman to step in. Armed with a team of ghost-busting researchers and 500 members of the public, his investigation was the largest paranormal operation ever set up. But ghosts are hard to pin down. The public were asked to walk through the palace and record any strange sensations they experienced. The aim was to try and profile the palace hotspots. Psychologist Kieran O'Keefe worked on the project. There are a few people reported actually seeing something, um, and they may have put down that it was a ghost, um, but they weren't able to say that there was an actual figure there. So people did report seeing something, yes. What was it that the amateur Ghostbusters were experiencing? Around about 50% of people reported something unusual. So sometimes they would say, yeah, it's, it's a really strange sense of presence. Or there's just something about the corner over there. I, I suddenly felt very cold. Or I just walked down this part of the corridor and suddenly had a burning sensation on my arm. Not only that, around about 25% of people actually attributed these experiences to a ghost. So there's something going on. There were a couple of places that I thought there could be ghosts. So I, I felt the temperature change, so I wrote it down. The highest rating spot was Catherine Howard's gallery. Could it be the young queen's tormented spirit? Or was there another answer? Infrared cameras set up around the palace monitored changes in the physical environment and helped turn up some intriguing results. Now, what's interesting is in the experiment, it's also the area where lots of people had some very strange experiences. And what's really interesting is it's also the place we found some very unusual magnetic fields. Now, it's a controversial theory, but maybe somehow those fields were causing people to have some rather...